Let's continue with the page number 121. The topic that we are going to start with it today is the use database. So the first question is, why do we need to use a database? We need to use a database. This is because once a database is created, we must make that as our current database in order to work with that database. So unless we do not make the database as our current database, we might not be able to work with the database that we have created. Now, check the top of the slide for the syntax. The syntax as given in the slide is like this, use followed by a space and then see the text within that angle bracket, database name, followed by semicolon. The text within that angle bracket database name will be replaced by the name of the actual database name. Say for example, if you have created a database name college, the statement to make that as our current database is use space college followed by a semicolon. So the statement use college follows the prototype use database name where the text database name is replaced by the name of the actual database called college. Now in this slide, we will learn how to drop a database. First question is, why do we need to drop a database? We drop a database when we no longer require it. When a database is no longer in use, it can be removed using the drop database statement. The syntax to do that is like this. Just check the slide at the top. Drop database and then within that angle bracket see the text database name followed by a semicolon. This is the syntax. So drop database database name followed by a semicolon is the syntax to drop a particular database. Say for example, if you wish to drop a database named college, simply type the statement drop database college followed by semicolon. Here, the name college has replaced the text database name inside that angle bracket in the syntax. Here, we will be learning about the command to view a database. The command as shown in the slide, show databases followed by a semicolon, displays the list of all the existing databases. Once you type the statement, show databases followed by a semicolon, you will be able to view the names of all the existing databases. In this slide, you will be learning about the basics of an SQL table. So what is a table? The table is basically a grid comprising of rows and columns, as can be seen in the figure on the slide. In a table, data is organized in row and column format. The figure in the slide shows the format of a table. In this table format, I have added only five columns and three rows. The five columns represented are column one, column two, column three, column four, and column five. And the three rows represented are row one, row two, and row three. But there can be multiple columns and multiple rows in a table. In the next slide, I will be showing the example of a particular table. The figure in this slide is an example of a table called student. The columns in this table are roll number, name, address, phone, and age. All these columns are placed vertically, whereas the records are placed horizontally in a row. The first record is 1 S. Kumar, Delhi 7643231. Similarly, the second record is 2 A. Kumar, Dimapur, 5698 32 
and there is another one just below it. As you can see, this table has five columns and three rows. The five columns, as I already told, are roll number, name, address, phone, and age. Whereas the three rows are those that you can see it in the table. In this slide, you are going to study about the different properties of a MySQL column. Now let's start with the first property of MySQL column that is data type. Now what is a data type? The data type of a column specifies the type of data that can be stored in it. MySQL supports the following data types as shown in the slide. The first one is tiny int. As this name implies, it can store tiny bit of integers of size 1 byte. The second, small int, can store small bit of integers of size 2 bytes. The third one is medium int, which can store medium bit of integers of size 3 bytes. The next, integer, is a data type, which can store integer values of size 4 bytes. The next one is big int. As the name implies, it can store bigger integer values of size 8 bytes. The next one is float. Now, the data type float is a bit different from the data type int. Or all the integer data types starting from tiny int till big int that we have discussed before. This is because, unlike the integer data type, the float is a data type which is used to store decimal values. That is why the float data type can store only decimal values of size 4 bytes. The next data type is double. Now double data type can store the bigger decimal values of size 8 bytes. The next is decimal itself. As the name implies, it can store decimal values of size 8 bytes. In the next slide, we will be discussing about the remaining data types. In this slide, we are going to discuss about the remaining data types used in MySQL. The first one is the CareM data type where M denotes the number of characters. This data type CareM can store characters such as letters and symbols. The letters can be capital A to Z or small a to Z and the symbols can be the characters such as dollar, the question mark, the semicolon, the colon and etc. The value M represents the number of characters. So, if you want to declare a 5 character data, put the value of m to 5. Or else, if you want to declare a 10 character data, put the value of m to 10. Then, you check the slide. The examples of care m data type are care 5, comma, care 10. Where, in the first case, the value of m is 5. That's why care 5. And in the second case, the value of m was 10 that's why care 10 and there can be many more now let's talk about the next data type that is binary now what is the binary data type this binary data type also includes a letter m within the bracket the letter m denotes the number of binary characters now you should note one thing that any binary uh, can be a number that is 0 or 1. It cannot be any other number than 0 or 1. The next data type is date. The date is a data type which can store the current date of size 3 bytes. Then after that you have many more data types such as date time, time, year, etc.
In this slide, I will be teaching you about the second property of the MySQL column that is null. So what is basically a null? If you have missing values in a column, those values can be represented as null. Let me show you with the help of an example. Just check the table in the slide. The address column has the values Delhi, Dimapur and Imphal. Now imagine what would happen if the data in the address column are not entered. I will show that with the help of two tables in the next slide. In this slide, look at the first table. You can see that the data in the address column are not entered. In that case, these empty cells will be filled up by the null values. This can be shown by the arrow mark pointing to the null values in the second table. So, the column address which initially had empty cells in the first table are filled up by the null values as can be seen in the second table. So, these two tables explains the concept of the null property of a column. And that's all for today. In the next discussion, I will be teaching you about the remaining properties of SQL columns.